Alright, you could have noticed a little skip there. I had to change the emulator settings. Your traps aren't particularly effective. Ugh, come on. Oh, we gotta get out of here now? Okay. I thought we were actually gonna play as Folu for a little while. Fulao, whatever the freaking hell his name is. It's been a while since we played as him. It was really only for a short period of time. Why is he really even here? I wonder. I mean, it seems as though, in a way, we're sort of... We're, I mean, we're playing as two different characters. We're playing as Ryu, and then we're playing as Folu, and then we're gonna switch back and forth, but we're spending most of our time as Ryu. Ah, shit. I need to, uh... How do I... I gotta switch out to Urshin, don't I? <laughs> there we go. So we're switching between characters every once in a while, but we're spending much more of our time... There we go. 
we're spending much more of our time playing as Ryu. Even though Ryu isn't really the focus of what's happening in the story here, like, at all. Whoops. So, I don't know, I'm, uh, damn it, what's happening there? <laughs> I'm a little, um, confused about what the, ah, oh, shit. Oh, just took a hit. <laughs> I'm a little confused about what the purpose of having this, these Folu segments are. Because, I mean, he's not really... It's kind of an interesting idea that you're playing as both the protagonist and the antagonist of a game. But Folu isn't really coming across as... I mean, he's coming across as a bad fella. But... The antagonist of the game seems to be more that goofy dressed bastard that we uh, encountered in the beginning of the game. I wonder if he's just sort of a red herring and someone else is going to become the, the big bad, so to speak. I don't know where to go. <laughs> Honestly, it's something that I've... Uh, the reason why I don't really play through too many, uh, I don't play through too many games blind is because it's, as strange as it may sound, it's actually a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit stressful in a way. Because I have to go and produce these episodes if I'm going to upload these videos. But, the, I keep thinking about, ah, oh, damn it, I'm going to have to go and I'm going to have to not only record the gameplay, but I'm going to have to add something to it, commentary. My own thoughts of it or whatever. And I gotta make it concise in a way, and I gotta have it make sense and all that. But I don't know my way through the game. So it's... I mean, there have been a few games on this channel that I've played through blind. I... There's, in fact, one that I, uh... One or two that I claimed to have played for through before, but hadn't. Uh, so this game I'm playing through blind. I guess Chrono Trigger I played through blind. I had played like the first half hour of it once years ago, but then was blind going through the bulk of the game. Uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake I played... Oh, I'm getting off topic anyway. But anyway, it's, it's a constantly occupied with thoughts about, like, oh, am I going to be able to pull this off? I'm going to be able to not get lost in a dungeon. Am I going to say something stupid because I don't have any foreknowledge about what's going to happen? I guarantee you I will and probably have in this episode. Case in point. This episode here, I'm playing through this, and I fought that pus pool enemy in the previous battle. I completely forgot that you throw fire magic at that some bitch in order to make it susceptible to physical attacks. Hmm. I mean, it's something that I learned earlier and then forgot, because I don't know the game that well, and little details tend to get lost on me. Plus, it's been a little while since I've made consistent episodes in this series. And what are we fighting? I feel like I can get turned around in this dungeon area here. Why am I not running? <laughs> and I did get turned around. I don't know where I am. Something I just noticed was missing from this game. Oh, that's an exit. Something I noticed that was missing from this game that I kind of missed from Breath of Fire 3 was the life bars of the enemies are like a constant on screen while you're in the battle in 3. They weren't hovering over the enemy's heads or anything, there was just sort of like a list of them over on the, um, a list of enemy names and then life bars under it. So you can get an idea so long as you've killed the enemy before, that type of enemy before, what it is you're fighting, like let's get into this fight. And it was a convenient little thing to be able to tell how many times you needed to hit him and how well your damage is doing with like a visual indicator. That skeleton's got three butts and a poop hanging out. So 
So yeah, these are all these are all new enemies anyway, so. It's got three butts and a poop hanging out. And a Gene Simmons tongue. That's it's all weird. I'm looking at a lot of weird right now. Oh, I guess that was a confusing, confused move. Well, anyway, just beat the piss out of him. But anyway, there's no life bars on display all the time. You can you target them, and then you can see what their life bar is, so long as you've killed them before. But it doesn't. Um, Is she trained up on a master? Like, did I do that? Because I'm seeing a red color under her power, but a blue under her wisdom. So it seems like a master thing. Um. Oh yeah, she is. Look at that. Master Arwolf. Wolf Rolf. Power down. I mean, I did notice that Nina displayed a kind of physical strength that her the other Ninas did in the other games that didn't in the other games. Especially in Breath of Fire 3, Nina was a complete wuss in terms of physical strength. This one, I mean, she wasn't really like a powerhouse in any regard, in any physical regard, but she was capable of uh, dealing physical attacks that did some measure of decent damage instead of being completely useless for it. So then I go and I completely screw that up by sticking her with a master which lowers her physical strength, but increases her wisdom or whatever that stat is called. So I kind of went and just screwed that up right away, but you know, she's not... Oh, okay, put himself to sleep. <laughs> Alright. But I, it doesn't really matter. I mean, she's supposed to be a casting character. I'm going to make her a casting character. But for the time being, before her, um, before her strength becomes completely like, outclassed, I'll use it here and there. Oh, okay, we got somewhere. Oh shit, we got there. I was expecting that dungeon to be a little bit longer. Okay, uh, normally I would, if I had an idea of where uh, the story was going and I knew where that dungeon was going to end, I would have ended this episode when we walked through that thing, but since I don't know where anything's going to be, we walked into this town, and now i got to end the episode after we walked into a town, so, you know, it's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for watching, though. Next episode, I guess I'll wander around Sinesta and see what's going on in this place. <laughs>